Hey, did you guys get your Bible done yet? We're gonna start school soon, but I need you to get your Bible done. Hey, you need to do your... Oh, you are? Okay, all right, good job. Mm. Okay. It is really important to me for my kids to be doing their own Bible devotions on their own. Maybe that's important for you too. So just to give a little background, I've been teaching Bible with my kids and doing morning time Bible lessons with my kids since they were like two years old. I have a background in children's ministry and I love working with kids and giving them scripture memory verses and just reading the Bible together, sharing Jesus with them. But as my kids have gotten older, I really want them to build the habit of studying God's word on their own. I've used a few things over the years, but I've landed on a, f a couple things that I really like and we've been sticking with for the past couple years. And one new resource I've been trying that I think is going great for one of my kiddos. In today's video, that's what we're gonna be talking about. And I'm so glad you're here. Well, hey, if we haven't met yet, hi, I'm Ashley. Nice to meet you. I'm a homeschool mom, former English teacher and children's ministry person. And I've been homeschooling my three kids for the past 10 years. My mission is to help you grow in your homeschool and adapt to your own child's needs and to find the joy in your family and honor Jesus in your homeschool. Here, I love to talk about Charlotte Mason inspired things as well as affordable and biblically based curriculum and help for the scattered and easily distracted homeschool mom. So I know that's a lot of things, but maybe you can relate to one of those. So, okay, I'm gonna go from oldest to youngest for what they use for their Bible on their own. So I've shared about this resource before. So my 13 year old uses Exploring the Bible, a Bible reading plan for kids by David Murray. And I'll let you know that my goal for my kids getting into the Bible, I want them to read the actual Bible. I'm not a huge fan of devotions, I would say, where somebody gives you one little verse and then they give you like a whole page or two just talking about their thoughts on it. So I want my kids to get the opportunity to read God's word and then think on it for themselves. And then we can talk about it together later. Uh, this is simple and easy to use. The passages that they are asked to read are not super long. And as she's getting older, she can probably handle a little bit longer, but I do want her to at least finish this book. Um, I actually had her start in the New Testament. This is an overview of the whole Bible, by the way. I actually had her start in the New Testament and she's making her way through the New Testament and then she's gonna go back and do the Old Testament. Uh, she's been in the New Testament for a while, so I think it's good for an Old Testament review because it's been a while. But we have our kids do their morning devotions by themselves. I call it what do I call it? Just Bible reading, I think is what I call it. I don't even call it devotions uh, because the point is just to read God's word and to understand it and get to know God more on their own. I don't set a timer for this or anything. I just make sure they get their Bible reading time in. Uh, she uses her own Bible. She has a NIV. I think she has the NIV Adventure Bible and she's been using that. It has memory verse options in here, which is great and a place for sermon notes. I don't make her use either of those because we have a family memory verse that we use. Um, if she wants to use this, she can for the memory verse, but I don't make her. And she also doesn't use it for sermon notes, but our church has like little note pages that they pass out on Sundays and she usually, usually uses that. <laughs> so for my fifth grader for his Bible reading time, he's using the Meeting with Jesus Bible reading plan. It's by David Murray as well. And this one is just the gospels, I believe. I can't remember why I didn't give him the overview one, but I think I wanted him to just start in this one and he's just making his way through it. And I don't give him a deadline. Like it's not like he has to finish it in a year. He's just gonna use it until he's done with it and keep going on until the next one. So he does pretty well at writing his little answers. He does not like writing a lot. So he only writes a few words or a few, or like barely in one sentence, but uh, it's at least getting him thinking on his own. But this version works exactly the same way as exploring the Bible. It's just not an overview of the whole Bible. It's just the Gospels, like I said. Uh, but I really wanted my son to just get to know Jesus and learn more about him and who he is. That, that really was my goal, I guess, for my fifth grader. He uses a um, NIRV book. I got him the NIRV mainly because the print is larger. So he does not love reading and has some struggles with it. 
So the larger prints helps them stay focused. And it's one of the simplest versions to understand. So we kind of go back and forth with NIV and NIRV. NIRV is really good for early readers because again, I want my kids to be reading the Bible for themselves and not just having, you know, having a commentary on it, but I want them to know that they can read it for themselves and they can hear uh, and learn from God's word now. So that is my fifth grader's Bible. If you have younger kids and you want to learn more about how to teach God's word to your younger kids, I do have a couple videos on that. You can totally go check those out and see what my favorite resources are for the younger kids. I love, love doing Bible songs with the younger kids. It's my favorite thing. So good. <laughs> That's for packing. You can set it to the side. Okay, what'd you get? I got this box <laughs> yeah, you with did. paper. More paper. Okay, let's more what's this? paper. What does that say? It's more paper. Oh. Peanut butter friends and chaps. It's more world. paper. There you go. Nice. And more paper. It's upside down. More paper. <laughs> and more paper. For my third grader, we are pulling in a new resource that we've been using for the last few months. And we had decided to go with Following Christ from BJU Press. Bible Truths 3, so third grade level. I looked about which level he should do, and he is third grade this year. And I looked at the topics they were doing for grade three, and I thought, oh, this is great. He is going to do an overview of the entire Bible as well. Uh, for himself this year. Now you're probably asking, Ashley, why didn't you just go with the other resources like you use for your other kids? That's a good question. Let me explain. I do adapt things for each kid and what their specific needs are. We don't always do the exact same thing that we did for each kid every year. Um, sometimes we do, but often we don't. So this is one of those things where this child, I feel like needed a challenge when it came to Bible reading. He enjoys it. He's a deep thinker. He's a logical thinker. He reads very well and understands well. And he loves workbooks and really doesn't mind doing them. There's just a lot of reasons, but those are kind of the main ones. I wanted to challenge him a little bit and have give him something uh, that he can do on his own, but still have some interaction with other people. It does not make sense. <laughs> so this is what he's doing for this year, at least. I'm very grateful to be working with BJU Press and to be able to use this and share it with you guys. Okay, this looks cool. It says this spine of this product is specifically designed to be open, making it easier to remove the pages. So I guess they want you to use like a three ring binder. You can, it's already hole punched here and then you can take the pages out. And so my kiddo will only have to do, you know, we, I can just hand him the pages he's supposed to be doing that day and not have to hand him the whole book. So I think that's kind of clever. That's kind of neat. So yeah. It comes with, uh, looks like we've got tests here, which I probably won't worry about, but I've also thought these looked really cool. These are stories about missionary kids. So there's this one, which is someone who moves to Taiwan. And then this one, a missionary kiddo in Ethiopia. So that looks kind of neat. And it looks like there's some more student handouts here that come with it. Also three hole punched, like these looked really neat too. These look kind of fun. The timeline. I like timelines. Timelines are fun. So there's a lot of components to it, but again, like I said, I wanted to challenge this kiddo and he's doing fairly well with it already. So he watches this video for the lesson. And this is an older version. They have videos for this from several years ago. They do have a newer Bible truths uh, curriculum for third grade, which looked really good. It had like catechism things and just learning about who God is and who, what God has made, most of the catechism things. So I really like what they have for their updated version of Bible truths uh, for third grade, but I wanted the streaming lessons for this one. So again, he could kind of do it on his own and challenge him, but he watches the lesson. And as he's watching, the teacher guides him through what he needs to do. So he does have a worksheet to do with each lesson to kind of help him just work through what he's learning and listening to. Uh, they do have a memory verse with this as well, which is fine. It's a short one. He's, he's really good at memorizing the scripture. So he does our family one and he's doing the short one that's in here as well. So it's kind of like his own Sunday school class here at home. And I guess I'll say this is another reason why I chose the BJU Press Bible class for him is our church currently does not have Sunday school. They do have a kids ministry, but it's not as in depth 
as what I would like for my son to be doing. So this is the in-depth Bible study that I am really looking for for him. One thing I love about their Bible program is that they are always pointing to Jesus. They're always talking about our need for a savior. And I think that is just super important for my kids to learn. We talk about that together as a family as well, but um, I'm thankful he can be getting some good truths from his class that he has taken from the BJU Press Bible study. There's also a timeline that comes with this. We put it on the wall in his room and he gets to kind of follow along with a chronological version of the Bible and what's taking place with the biblical events. But it's been really neat to hear what he's learning from this. There are times we'll be just talking about things and he'll bring up something that he had learned or read or heard and I'm like, oh wow, that's great. So he's, he's really catching on and I'm really excited for this kiddo. He's decided to get baptized and he's gonna be baptized this February. And he's picked uh, Luke, Luke 10, 27 for his special memory verse for the baptism. And that was the memory verse he had at Vacation Bible School this last year. So I'm just really thankful for this kiddo and how he is growing in the Lord. And I keep praying for him and all my kids that they really would fall in love with God's word um, as they grow and as they get to know him more. Oh, so again, don't forget you can adapt any of these to your own child's needs and to your own needs. For example, they do have a hymn with this curriculum, but I have him skip it. I said, hey, you can go ahead and listen to it if you want, but he didn't want to. Uh, it is kind of a little bit older recording. Uh, we prefer to listen to a different style of music in our home and it doesn't really match the style of music we enjoy, but we also already do hymns together as a family. So I let him go ahead and skip that, but everything else he pretty much does along with the curriculum. And it's been going great. And I love that he can do it all on his own uh, most days of the week. Well, there you go. That is our recommendations for kids doing Bible on their own for their devotions at home in their homeschool. And we try to do this every day. My goal is five days a week. It's part of their routine that they do for getting ready for the day. Um, but there really are some days we miss it. Um, but I try really hard to make it a daily thing and make sure it's part of our routine so they can build those skills to grow and have their own quiet time and enjoy being in God's word. I hope it's not a drudgery, you know, because there's times where it's, you know, people say, you have to do this, you have to do this. And there's a time in my life I was a part of a group where we were required to have an hour long quiet time every day as part of our agreement to join this group. And looking back on it, I really took the, the letter of the law instead of the spirit of the law with that. But I do know through that time I was reading God's word and his word did really come alive to me. Uh, I went through the Psalms and some of the gospels, it was really great. <laughs> but I believe we are never too young to start reading God's word on our own. And so I think it's good to give the kids a resource they can do that's very, uh, not easy, but it's doable. And it's a guide, it's not just, hey, go read your Bible, but it's a nice uh, intentional uh, guide for them to be able to read on their own. So thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in any of these resources, I'll put a link in the description, all about them in the box below. Uh, if you've got any questions about these, please let me know. And here's a playlist of more videos about Bible memory and working with the kids, of teaching them about God's word. And thank you so much again to BJU Press. And you guys rock. Go find your joy in your family and in Jesus. I will see you next time.